these strategies, this particular strategy, you, you mentioned you can accumulate very quickly. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's something called the rule of 72 and Albert Einstein uh, devised this mathematical equation to uh, be able to calculate the doubling rate of things. And so uh, you, you take whatever your interest rate is and you divide it by 72 and that will tell you how long it will take for this money to double, right? So right now, if you have money at the bank earning 1% and you have $100,000 at 1%, it's gonna take 72 years of compound interest to double your money. Well, guess what? I'm not here in 72 years, you're not here, uh, but I'm, I'm not gonna be here, right? So I gotta do better than 1%, right? Um, Think about like, like the very best, uh, the very biggest credit union here in Utah pays 0.1%. So 720 years <laughs> for me to double my money. Okay, no, no thank you, right? So um, if, we can, if we can get uh, a higher interest rate and we can remove the taxation on our growth, right? It, it's like, uh, removing the drag on a sailboat, right? It's going to sail through the water if it doesn't have that drag. Or it's the reason why scientists are brought in to make cars aerodynamic, right? So they get better gas mileage. So we're going to get more bang for our buck, right? Uh, with, with the one strategy that's really good for uh, banking, that's been earning between 5 to 6% tax-free for about 100 years. The indexing strategy that's linked to different indices on, on the stock exchange, uh, those have been averaging between seven to eight percent, but they have the ability to earn double digits. I've personally earned double digits tax-free. My wife has earned double digits tax-free. Uh, with that one, the, y there is the risk that the market could go negative, but the worst that happens in these plans is you get a zero, right? So I, I've had years where I also got a zero, right? So I've had a year where I got like 12% tax-free. I've also had a year where I got zero. And, you know, I was irritated to get a zero, but if the market's down 20, would you rather lose 20% or just have no growth that year? No right? growth, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so anyway, that's, that's the kind of money that uh, you're, you could be earning, right? And, and we've forgotten, we've forgotten what 5 or 6% compound interest can actually do for our money, right? So if you take $20,000 at 5% and you run it out 30 years, you're at over $80,000, right? That, that's a big jump in money. But you, you, take, you take that same 20,000 at 0.1 or half a percent and you run it out 30 years, you, you've got like 25,000 oh. bucks. It's pathetic, right? Yeah. It, it's really, really sad. And so what has happened is you have a dichotomy happening here in the United States. And what happens is people are like, okay, uh, I'm going to go with the safety of the bank and earn nothing, or I'm going to, I'm going to leave the realm of safety and I'm going to go after bigger returns in the stock market. But now I'm, I'm pushing my money into a lot of risk exposure and, and it comes back to bite people in the butt sometimes. Um, and, and so anyway, we're, we're kind of being forced to go one of two routes. And the thing I like about this is it's kind of like the Goldilocks principle, right? It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just right in the middle where if you could just consistently year in and year out, get five to 6%, you're going to end up with significantly more money than most Americans. And you're going to do it in the realm of safety and in the realm of not being taxed to death down the road. So we heard about Roth IRA and 401k and uh, all these other um, tax uh, sheltered type of investments. How does this compare to those? So this would be closer to a, a Roth. Um, in fact, uh, Tony Robbins in his book, Money Master the Game, calls these the rich man's Roth IRA. Uh, <laughs> he, I don't know if he coined that phrase, but I'll give him credit because it's in his book, right? Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, the, the problem with the 401k is even uh, the, the guy that created it, I think his last name's Bannon, 
he created this in the 70s, it was to take a small percentage of wealthy people's money and shelter it from tax for 10 or 20 years, right? Well, Wall Street figured out that, wait a minute, we can tie people's money up until they're 59 and a half and then scare them into not spending any until they're 70 and a half. We can lock people's money in Wall Street for decades. We can skim fees off of the American people for decades, mm. right? So um, let, let, let me ask you this. Maybe, maybe down uh, in Texas it's different, but how many 401k millionaires do you know personally? Um, not anybody personally. <laughs> okay. I, I know a couple of them because they're clients. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the problem is, uh, I'll give you an example, right? So I had a guy, he called me, he was from um, Boston, nice thick Boston accent. And uh, he said, I, I found your book, Taming Wall Street, while touring a Catholic church, and it was in a donation box. I was like, <laughs> oh, man, okay, great. <laughs> nice and he donation. goes, man, I, I, I really love it. Um, I'd like to look at something like this for my grandchildren, but I don't need it because I've got a million dollars in my 401k. Ah. And he, he probably slipped in that he has a million dollars in his 401k at least three or four times in the conversation. Yeah. So then... Being an educator, I educated him, and I ended up losing him as a, a client, but I shared the truth with him, which is what matters the most, right? I said to him, uh, you do realize that you're not a 401k millionaire. About 40 to 50% of that money belongs to Uncle Sam. And he was like, what are you, what are you talking about, man? I, I looked at my statement, it's got over a million dollars, and I go, have you ever paid any tax on the principal? have you ever paid any tax on the gain? And he said, no, that's the power of a 401k. And I said, no, that's, that's the delay of a 401k. You're now almost 70 years old and you've not paid a dime on that million dollars. Do you think Uncle Sam is going to let you get off this planet without paying your fair share? And he goes, oh man, I forgot about that part of a 401k. I said, you've got a ticking tax time bomb on your hand. I said, here's the thing. You probably owe about 40% while you're alive. If you die, it all becomes taxable in the first year plus death taxes, which are due nine months from the time you die. You may owe 50 to 60% of that on your death. So do you wanna hand your family a $600,000 tax bill? He didn't end up becoming a client, but um, anyway, I, I just had to tell him, you know, so that's the danger of an IRA. That's the danger of a 401k is you may get to a large amount, but you've got a large amount of taxes owed, right? Let's say that you did have a million dollars and you wanted to pull out 50,000 a year to live on. Well, you've got to pull out 70 to pay tax to have the 50. Mm. Right, think of an apple. Uncle Sam's gonna get his bite of your apple and then hand the rest back. And then you're like, I don't want this half eaten apple, right? Yeah, my so, half has a worm in it. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> they say the only thing worse than finding a worm in your apple is finding half a worm. In yeah, that's apple, right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, those, those are some of the dangers. But if I was to compare this, I would say it's closer to a Roth IRA, right? We're using money that's already been taxed. And then inside the IRS tax code, the IRC tax code, uh, it cannot be taxed ever again, as long as you follow the rules.